YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back with my NFL Week 10 score predictions. Doing this video every single week. And also on the Patreon, you get separate score predictions. Junior, the defending picks champion. His score predictions, they're actually already up there for this week. So you kind of compare mine every week to his. This week, we have a few that are very, very similar pretty close and then there's a few games that we're in a total disagreement on uh, and if you sign up for that tier on the patreon you also get updated playoff predictions every week by myself uh, for this week they are up and same goes for the nfl mock drafts i update them every single week updated order constantly changing obviously with teams winning and losing every week uh, and that is updated for the week as well so you get a lot there and you also help support us help us grow patreon.com slash the goat house for more info there's a link in the description as well and help us get to that 40K sub goal. Appreciate anybody here that does subscribe. Uh, full NFL content, recast, power rankings, predictions like these. Plenty more all year long, not just season long. Full free agency and NFL coverage in the offseason. Go ahead and uh, check out our Twitter too, Goathouse NFL. Link in the description for that. Don't forget to click the like button. But this week's predictions, a lot of tight games. You know, a lot of games I'm on the fence about. Uh, so we'll break we'll break down every game. But uh, starting with the first one. Thursday night, and this is one of those tough ones. You know, uh, Chargers are actually favored in the game. So what I do is I pick the score, and then I take a look at the line for the first time and plug it in the graphic there. Uh, so I predicted the Raiders to win 27-23, and the Chargers are favored by one point. So it seems like I like the Raiders there, but it, honestly, it's not one I'm going to put money on because, you know, it, it's one of those toss-up games. And you see how the Chargers are playing now. Is this? Do we have a firm identity on this new Chargers team? Is it a new Chargers team? You know, I know they got Melvin Ingram back. I think very highly of him. Melvin Gordon's getting going. Russell Kong's back. So maybe this team's just getting going now. You know, maybe they're just getting going. The Raiders, even though the last three games they lost two games, um, you know, they played pretty well. They played well enough to win maybe one of those games, and then they beat the Lions. All those games were pretty much a shootout. It's a little bit of a different uh, challenge for them here. I think a little better defense in this game they're playing. But I love this Raiders offense. And it, the way I'm thinking here is the Raiders are a team that you kind of have to keep up scoring with to beat. You know, can you do that? The Chargers, again, sometimes this year, they just most of the time this year, they just have not been able to do that. I'm also, something I'm keeping an eye on is Trent Brown if he plays. Uh, that is key for them, obviously, if he plays. Uh, and they've been kind of taking out those pass rushing teams. You know, they've really been eliminating. I mean, you see the the last few teams they play. I mean, the Packers, they have a really good pass rush too. They pretty much took those guys out of the game. It was just an offensive battle. Uh, so I think they can remove the good pass rush of the Chargers for the most part. And, and that's really the difference. And, and can the Chargers offense keep up with the Raiders? That There's still some question marks with mainly the Chargers. So that's why and you look at the past Thursday night games. A lot of weird things happen. You know, for the most part, the right team wins, I guess, the team we all expect to win. But it's a, it gets a little interesting. We saw, I mean, last week the Cardinals played well enough to beat the Niners. The week before, the Redskins were hanging with the Vikings. You know, we've seen some weird things throughout the year as well, even you know, known as upsets throughout the year. Uh, so we'll see. That's a tough one, but that's my score line. Lions and the Bears, I was shocked to see that the Bears are favored in this game. The Lions are plus two and a half. I, I'm not sure what I'm missing here. I mean, the only thing is you can see the Bears bouncing back. You know, I guess they're due. We could say that. They're due. And I have been saying for the last several weeks, if you remember, one of these games the Bears are going to – the offense is going to look good. It's going to look like they're almost fixed. But I don't think it's a long-term thing. I think it's kind of just going to be a one-time thing. I, I know it's going to happen at some point. Could this be the game? Uh, to me, the Lions are much like the Raiders, who they just were in a battle with. You know, it's one of those teams that you know earlier in the year they were like, okay, this might be a defensive team, but no, it's the opposite. The offense is getting going; they're getting a the groove on. It's one of those teams you just have to keep up scoring and then make that extra play on defense. I can trust the Bears' defense, but not when they're always on the field. You know, again, remember Akeem Hicks is out too. It's a big loss. It's been a big loss, uh, and they're always on the field. And the Lions will score on you. I'm predicting them to get into the red zone somewhat easy for a Bears defense. It's still a good defense. Uh, but I think the Bears defense will step up in the red zone, actually, force a lot of field goals here. I just don't trust the Bears offense. You know, 17 points maybe looks good compared to what they have been doing. So they can get some things going here, maybe a step in the right direction. I just don't think they can keep up with the Lions, um, you know. Uh, you know, the Lions were actually even last year against the Bears. They were able to move the ball. You know, they, they couldn't quite execute in the red zone. 
and there was some you know crucial turnovers. It seems like a different Stafford this year, it's different Lions offense. So I, I think they'll be able to move the ball pretty well. It's just uh, the difference in field goals and touchdowns, but still enough for the Lions here. And, and they're getting two and a half points, so that's interesting. Uh, the Ravens and the Bengals, I got a 28-10 win for the Ravens. It's an 18-point win. Uh, yeah, the Bengals, I'm really looking forward to Ryan Finley. Uh, he's solid. I think he was underrated in the draft. You know, very accurate quarterback. You know, worry about the velocity on the ball. I guess worry about the deep ball. Yeah, in terms of velocity and how far he can throw, he has a nice touch pass downfield, however. Um, so, I mean, he can get going. It's going to be a tough first game, though, uh, you know, against a, a very hot, you know, right there with the Niners in terms of how hot this team is, the Ravens, on both sides of the ball. Both sides of the ball, they're feeling it. Um, I will say, it seems like when these new new quarterbacks kind of step in or the quarterbacks we don't expect much from, it seems like right away they're, that's when they're best. You see, like, Minshew starting to fall down a little bit. Kyle Allen was, I mean, he's still playing good, but earlier was better. Uh, and Daniel Jones, same thing. Earlier was better. Sam Darnold got thrown back in the mix. First game was great. Just been absolutely terrible after. Um, and you see all these young quarterbacks starting to go downhill, you know, except for the the big-time ones. Kyler Murray's getting better, obviously. Uh, so maybe, my point is maybe, you know, the first game, you know, maybe he starts off good. You know, I, I'd be very shocked if the Bengals won this game. Uh, I got the Ravens winning by well over the minus 10 mark there. It's a very good football team. Um, hopefully they don't slip up, though. You know, people are worried about that Browns game coming back. I'm not too worried about that. You know, they're going to have – every team's going to have those weeks where they're just off, you know. Uh, and that Browns game was early in the season, too. So the Ravens may have a week coming up where – it's they're just off. It's possible. I just don't think this is the game. Uh, the Bills and the Browns. See, I thought I was bold. I thought I was real bold picking the Browns in this game. Then you see the line. The Browns are actually favored by two and a half. Surprised by that one. I thought I was. I thought this was my upset of the week. I'm still considering it my upset one or one of the upsets of the week. Maybe. Um, you know, the Bills are playing much better football than the Browns. The Browns are just disappointing. You know, so this is a bold prediction for me. I thought. Um, 21 20 see a close game uh, I think it, you know in terms of the matchup I, I I think the Browns are a little different even though they're they're not too good lately they're they're a different matchup for the Bills and what they have been playing you know I think it's going to be similar to kind of like the Eagles game in terms of the matchup I, I think it's a much closer game than that uh, I think Baker could get going in this one I think Odell can get going uh, Tredavious White's been an outstanding quarter corner and, you know, the rest of the secondary has been playing great. The safety duo is great. But I think they can try to get Odell on some mismatches. You know, maybe they, you know, the key is to keep Tredavious White on him. Uh, but we'll, we'll see how they do there. Uh, but the Browns got to get something going on offense. They got to stop turning the ball over. Uh, the defense has got to want to tackle. Uh, but, yeah, the thing is, uh, you know, the Bills offense isn't the scariest offense, too. So kind of a bold prediction, I thought. 21-20 Browns. Uh, and they are getting two and a half points. Not really one I would touch, though, uh, because that, that, that's a game that can go either way. Uh, the Chiefs and the Titans, I got a 24-16 final for the Chiefs. They're only minus three and a half, and this is with uh, this is actually with Matt Moore playing. This is my scoreline with Matt Moore playing. I'm going to say he plays. If Mahomes plays, um, yeah, honestly, you know the Titans could actually put up more points against Mahomes because when you're playing Mahomes, you know you have to go all out. You may have to get a little fancy. So the Titans could put up a little more points, but the Chiefs are going to put up you know, possibly 27, 28, up to 31 points, somewhere around there. I do like the Titans' defense. Very similar situation to the Bears, though. They're just always on the field, so they're not going to look as good as they actually are. Uh, the Chiefs, uh, what to watch out for for the Chiefs, their defense is getting better. Chris Jones is back out there. Um, Spagnuolo is doing a real good job game planning. It, it looks like a different defense, and they could get Frank Clark back. Uh, I got them winning 24-16. You know, the main reason being I don't trust the Titans' offense. I really don't. It starts with the... It starts with the play calling uh, and the personnel, you know, basically the coaching staff, what they're using out there. And then and then it goes to Tannehill, not a whole bunch of trust in Tannehill uh, and, and the offensive line. Offensive line's been real rough. Supposed to be one of the better offensive lines, too, so that's just very disappointing. Uh, but I'm always on board with, um, you know, the offensive line's as good, of it, is, it's as good as its scheme, you know, which has to do with the coaching. So maybe some coaching changes early there in Tennessee after the season. We'll see. Uh, but I got the Chiefs winning that game 24-16. Uh, Falcons, Saints, Saints winning that one 31-14, plus 13. It's a lot of points, but, uh, yeah, you think uh, you think they would uh, ha- really have – shouldn't have any trouble covering that, you would think, uh, unless there's a slip-up for Breeze or something, you know, wild that I just don't expect to happen. The main thing about the Saints team, it's balanced. You know, there's really no holes. And I love this defense. Big step up from last year. Um, you know, maybe a break is what the Falcons needed, but – 
you know, especially this game being in New Orleans, I'm just not seeing it. You know, I got 31-14, Saints winning that one. And the Giants and the Jets, 24-20. So I guess you could say the Jets get going on offense a little bit compared to the other weeks. Um, I think it's possible. Darnold can play a little better of a game. I, I still think he can turn the ball over here. Le'Veon most likely out from what I've heard. Um, so that does definitely does not help their their cause there. Giants are minus two and a half. Yeah, I got a kind of cut and close there. But as long as it's under three, it's still yeah, I, I feel pretty confident. But it is a New York battle. Uh the the Jets are considered the home team here, but I definitely like the Giants, you know. We'll see if Shepard can play. I'm still looking forward to him getting back in there. A little scary situation with the concussion. It seems like the Giants, you know, I know they just give up a bunch of points to the Cowboys, but some guys are starting to step up and become playmakers. You got Leonard Williams' uh, revenge game here, so we'll see. Uh, it, you know, if if you're really confident about the Giants there and that stays under uh, under minus three, which it is right now, two and a half, then that's definitely an intriguing one for sure. Uh, next game is the Cardinals and the Bucks. One of those ones where – it's it's another one of those toss up games this week. I got the Bucks winning thirty to twenty eight. I like them in terms of the matchup. You know them being home. Um, you know they played pretty well against the Seahawks last week. The Cardinals played pretty well against the Niners. I, I really like the the Buccaneers pass rush and that could cause some trouble. It's a pretty athletic pass rush too. Barrett, you know, showing uh, how athletic he is there on the edge, and that's really good against this Cardinals offensive line and Kyler Murray. So um, you know, I I do worry about the secondary of the Bucks a little bit. Uh, and, but and for the Bucks, I worry about Jameis Winston. You know, it seems like every time I pick him, he he goes overboard with the turnovers. Uh, you know, last week was just that one costly one that cost him a game against the Seahawks. If he plays like that and does that same turnover uh, as last week, I think they win this game. You know, because it's not the Seahawks; it's the Cardinals who are getting better. Um, it's not one I would really touch in terms of you know the line here. Uh, the Cardinals are plus four, but. I, I like the Bucks, but not a whole bunch of trust mainly in uh, Winston in terms of you know turning the ball over. But th- at home, they they should win this game. You know, this is really it for them. You know, it's the season's going to be. I mean, really, it's probably over right now. But it's really going to feel like it's over. You know, in Tampa, if they if they lose this one, so I think it's a must win. Stupid to say, must win, but that's what it feels like here. Uh, the Dolphins and the Colts got twenty four thirteen. Sounds like Brissett will play. I think this would be around the range here, uh, plus 10.5, so it's real close there uh, for the Dolphins. And, and the Colts, of course, are minus 10.5. Uh, you know, I think uh, I like the Colts' defense. You know, hopefully it can stay consistent. I, I don't I have zero worries about this game. You know, I don't see the Dolphins scoring anymore. I think 17 has got to be the absolute max. And, and if Brissett's playing a little, you know, if it's Hoyer too, you know, Ho- maybe you take a little bit of points off. I don't pers- expect Brissett to do anything crazy. I think the game plan is going to be run. You know, run Marlon Mack. I think he's going to have a heck of a game. So I got them winning by 11. Pretty pretty close call here with the 10.5. Uh, the next game is the Panthers and the Packers. Very interesting one for many reasons here. I got the Packers winning 24-20 to uh, while it's real close with the line, plus 5. So it's definitely not, you know, forget how much I had them winning by and what the line is anyways. It's probably not one I would touch either way because there's a lot of factors in this one. I, I mean, you look at last week with the Packers, you look at uh, how did that performance happen? How did that performance happen? Is that something new? Is that a second half of the season thing? I've seen it a million times before. People will be surprised, but I've seen it a million times be- before, uh, meaning this can act- that actually can continue to happen. If I had to put money on it, I don't think it will continue to happen at all. Um, but it could, so that kind of sticks with you. And you're playing a Panthers team who gets a pretty good pass rush. They can get their hands on the ball in terms of turnovers. Uh, and, and thing, you know, even last week when I picked the Packers, I said something to watch out for is the tackle play. Um, you know, mainly because they're they look a little beat up. You know, Bakhtiari a couple weeks ago came off the field for a little bit. Balaga stayed off the field, and they didn't have their best game last week. You know, and, and they need a bye week right now for those guys. And, and you're you're going against Brian Burns. You're going against you know that that Panthers pass rush, whether it's Mario Addison, Christian Miller, guys coming from the inside too. Um, you know that that could be the difference, and that could be the reason why Rodgers is in a hurry and he and he is short on throws. So that kind of sticks in my mind. Uh, but there's a big difference here that the, they're in Lambeau. I think they'll bounce back. Like I said, my money's on their offense bouncing back a little bit. Uh, being in Lambeau is the key here. If it was in Carolina, this would be the toughest game to pick all year. Another thing, the Panthers seem to succeed against teams like like they played last week, like the Titans. You know. That offense doesn't scare you a whole bunch. That defense scares you, but when their offense is off the field instantly, the defense doesn't scare you any longer. It's a little bit different here playing the Packers, just just a little bit. Uh, not really in terms of the skill, just how how they are as a team is my point. 
Another thing, though, is that, that – see, I'm back and forth here. Um, the Packers' run defense is, is falling right now. It's falling, uh, and look look who they're playing. They're playing the best running back in football here. So that could be the key for the Panthers. Uh, another thing to look out for, I heard it's snowing in, in, um, in Green Bay. If it snows during the game, you automatically think – Okay, the Packers home in the snow, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that's what you automatically think, but it could turn into a running game, which both teams run the ball very well. Packers got a good duo. So that could be interesting if that's the case there too. Um, you know, that's just if the field is covered, just something interesting if it does, but don't really expect it to be that way on Sunday, but you never know. But I got the Packers, and you might say, you know, this is a little low scoring. Yeah, I think a lot of running the ball, which which will run the clock, which I think this is pretty high scoring actually for uh, – you know, for running the ball a lot and running the clock. Um, just a little more trust in Aaron Rodgers over Kyle Allen, too, unfortunately, at this point for for the Panthers fan. But Kyle Allen's been impressive. Uh, next game is the Rams and the Steelers. Uh, I got the Rams winning 23-17 off the bye week. Uh, but what I do worry about with the Rams is, is their, their offensive line and golf under pressure. That's kind of been the worry. And the Steelers have a very good front seven. Very good front seven. They've been balling lately. They even got Bud Dupree's having a – pretty darn good year so that is the scary part that that kind of favors the Steelers there that that's the argument for the Steelers I just think off the bye week with the weapons that they have um, against the Steelers defense you have to put the ball into the secondary well into the secondary I, I really think McVay will have a game plan as you can see I don't see a whole bunch of action because there will be the moments where golf is hit sacked they'll have to run the ball uh, but they'll just do it enough and the Rams defense the last couple weeks we saw them play looked a little better you see Ramsey in there could that be it? We'll see if it keeps up. Don't have a whole bunch of trust in Steelers offense. You know, they've been impressive. Mason Rudolph's been pretty accurate, pretty pretty safe throwing the ball for the most part. Um, we'll see if James Conner can go too. But I, I like the Rams there by six points or minus three and a half. But you see, I had matchup reasons for both sides, so that one's a little scary. Uh, the Vikings and the Cowboys, I got a 24 Vikings, Cowboys 27 final. That sounded funny, 27-24 Cowboys win. Uh, and it's plus three, so that that's right there. I am confident the Cowboys will win this game, though, even though I'm right on, you know, right on that three, right on that three mark. Um, you know, just for matchup reasons, you compare both these teams. Uh, you know, they are very similar, very, very similar. I talked about in the straight up picks uh, video with the other guys. I mean, I mean, you look at this team in every category. These teams. Very, very similar. They have the same scheme on defense as well. Uh, and, you know, I think the differences are the offensive lines there. The Cowboys, much better offensive line. The Vikings, much better at receiver. But, but Adam Thielen uh, is most likely going to be out of the game. What did the Chiefs do when Thielen came out of the game? Well, they doubled up Dicks and they forced guys like Treadwell to beat them, which Treadwell played a solid game. Uh, and But they stacked the box. You send two guys on Dicks, you stack the box, you play the run. Dalvin Cook was getting hit in the backfield like crazy pretty much every time they ran the ball and I'm not even being funny um so I think the Cowboys if they're smart will have the same game plan forces the Vikings not to be able to do a whole bunch the Vikings defense doesn't look the same as it has um you know the last you know it was really good last year and it was elite the year before it's not there right now you know the pass rush and the blitz is pretty darn good um you know Eric Kendricks is having a career year but the corner play is pretty poor right now um, so I, I like the Cowboys in this one, especially being home prime time. You know, people people overuse the Kirk Cousins prime time thing. It's kind of the Vikings. You know, if, the, if you look at the Vikings track record away in these games, it's kind of it's kind of just them. Maybe it has something with the coaching staff. They haven't been executing down the line. Uh, I don't have a whole bunch of trust in either coaching staff. Honestly, they both coach a good defense, um, but not a whole bunch of trust. I'd say if the Vikings do win the game, I'm going to assume it's because. You know, the wrong Dak Prescott showed up. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Or Kirk Cousins played absolutely out of his mind. Uh, we've seen that a couple times this year. We've seen it in L.A. in primetime last year. So you never know, I guess. But a lot of the signs point towards the Cowboys. The main reason being they'll, they'll be smart with their defense game plan with Adam Thielen most likely out. Um, so we'll see. And then the the game of the week, the Monday night game, I have very, I was very surprised to see six points going to Seattle, plus six. Um, not that I love that one. I was just surprised that it was plus six. If it's plus seven, then I love it because obviously it's possible they can lose by a touchdown. Very possible they can win the game, though. I had a one-point game here, uh, some field goals in this game. You know, still trying, still trying to figure out some things about these two teams, actually, as odd as it sounds, uh, because the Niners – 
been excellent this year. They've been the best team in football this year. You know, they have they really played the Seahawks, though. They played the Panthers, but have they played Russell? That's the main thing. Have they played Russell Wilson? No, they have not at all. So that is the thing. You know, can he throw on their secondary? Very possible. Uh, Kwan Alexander's out, so how would that change the Niners? That's kind of a question mark. Um, the team, the whole team's been playing great this year. Jimmy Garoppolo has been mainly a game manager, not having to do a whole bunch. And you would say he would have to do a whole bunch more in this game. But you look at last week, he did a whole bunch. You know, so if that Jimmy G meets up with the rest of the Niners, it's the best team in football, hands down. Um, so we'll see if that kind of shows up. The Seahawks, a little beat up on the offensive line. No Will Disley. Some pressure's been getting to Russell Wilson. He's still playing like an MVP but that enough pressure will kind of force some incompletions here and there uh, for him, which are key. Last week, the Bucks got insane pressure on him, um, but he always had receivers open because the Bucks secondary actually could be the worst in football. The Niners secondary has been very, very good, so a little different there, so that kind of sides with the Niners. And like I mentioned, the, the offensive line, um, kind of the same situation against the Bucks. The Niners have a very good pass rush. You know, in crucial games, I much rather have the Niners pass rush than the Bucks. People will probably argue with me that on that, but uh, the, this Niners all uh, the pass rush is is ridiculous. You know, it, it's it's not all about the sacks too. It's just getting the pressure, getting consistent pressure. I think they can do that here. Um, and also on the opposite side of the ball, the Niners have been you know keeping Jimmy G pretty clean, and, and that's that's uh. One of the most important things in football, I'd say quarterback play, pass rush, and keeping quarterback safe. They've done all three of those things pretty darn well. You know, Jimmy G, I want to see more of Jimmy G, but I think that could be enough here. It was in Seattle. I, I Honestly, I'd probably be picking the Seahawks, so this is just a real good game. Surprised by the plus six, uh, but again, you have to remember that they possibly can lose by a touchdown. If that goes to plus seven, yeah, that, I'm liking that a lot better, so. Something interesting there to, to kind of keep an eye on. Um, but that is my score predictions. Again, junior score predictions are up for this week and will be every single week. Uh, on the Patreon, there's a link in the description. You also get playoff predictions, mock drafts, and more if you sign up there and you help support our channel. And we have full NFL coverage all year long, so please subscribe right here on YouTube. We would really appreciate that, trying to get to that 40K goal. Uh, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.